Alrighty, so the inductive automation development team has added a bunch of really cool features to Ignition's native scripting console and project library that can help you increase your efficiency and debugging capabilities. So with that, let's go ahead and fire off that starting gun and kick off our first scripting feature we're gonna be highlighting today. So here I have an Ignition designer. In the project library, I have a simple script that defines some attributes of a runner. If you're not familiar with object-oriented programming, that's totally all right. Um, the features I'm gonna be showing today are applicable to all types of applications. So nothing too much to highlight here. I'm gonna go straight over into my script console where we're gonna be doing all of our work today. So on the left side, we have the multi-line buffer. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste in this script. You'll notice I do have the white space and tab lines on. This is just gonna help me make sure I don't have any secret spaces in there. That's a bonus little tip. So first thing you'll notice is that we're using system.util.getglobals. So if you're not familiar with globals, Ignition Globals is a global namespace to store objects, Python dictionaries. This dictionary persists across the life of the JVM. So you can just store things there. It could be an object, it could be a list, a string, whatever you'd like. In this case, we're just going to store some runner records. But this script is not quite finished. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a new function definition here. So define get results. And the first thing is when I press enter here, I'm gonna get an auto return tab. If, you, if you're used to using other IDEs, you're probably real familiar with this. This is just a real great quality of life improvement that was was added, which I think is, is, uh, is just really nice. So that's that's the first thing, pretty simple. You don't really have to look too far to get to that one. So if I start writing here, we're all probably familiar with this, this autocomplete, which is really, really nice. You don't have to remember exactly which functions we have and also what uh, arguments they take. So if I just come over here into write blocking, you can see all of the arguments and some information about it. So of course you can always go to the uh, the docs page, but it's nice just to have a, a little quick hits here. So real quick, I'm just going to press tab, which is going to auto complete. And then the next thing here is that we have uh, the first argument already highlighted. So if I press tab and then shift tab, it's going to go back and forth. Pretty cool. Now, the next thing that's been added is this concept of smart quotes and smart brackets. So without even, with, with this text highlighted, I am going to press an opening square bracket and a double quote. You notice that just putting the opening square bracket and just one double quote, it added it around the entire selected text. This is going to make my, my list of tags that much easier to create. Now, straight from here, I'm gonna press tab and it's gonna highlight my other field. Once again, I'm going to press opening square bracket, one double quote with that text highlighted and I can click, I can get my value, just that simple. I'm gonna press tab one more time and it's gonna put me out to the end of the line. Alrighty. Well, that was pretty quick. Next, what we're gonna do, I don't actually need this right now. I'm gonna utilize the code folding and unfolding. This is a feature that's been here for quite some time now, but if I don't need something, I can just go ahead and hide it. Maybe it's a debug function. Maybe it's something that I'm, I'm testing that I don't quite need. So anywhere that you see these arrows on the left-hand side, you can go ahead and hide it. So I'm just gonna hide that get results function for now. Alrighty, so down here I have some runners. This utilizes the class that we created here, that we saw here. So we see athlete.runner, we have some runners defined, but I'm gonna add one more runner. So one way that you can do to duplicate a line, you can press Control D or Command D on Mac as I am, and it just copied the line that was highlighted. So now I can come over and Update this. Oh, 
There we go. All righty. So now that I have my fourth runner in here, I'm going to press Control Enter or Command Enter on Mac in order to execute that script. Here we go. We have our output just as expected. Now, what's really cool is on this interactive interpreter on the right side, you can actually type right into here too. So I'm just going to type lane4.name. That's accessing our, our class. And there we go, Usain Bolt. This is really helpful for, for debugging and troubleshooting. If you've already run something, uh, you can just kind of look right into it right here. You can also run system scripts right from here. So there we go. I can run my system.util.getglobals, and I see exactly what I put in right here. Once again, it can be really helpful to, to debug some of your scripts if you're running into some issues. One last thing. If I just click on the end of this here, say I just forgot, I forgot exactly what, what went in here. I'm going to press Control Space, and that's going to bring back up my, uh, my autocomplete. And even for custom uh, user-defined functions and classes, I can see my doc string that I have in here, in right, right here. So adding a doc string in your, your project library can help you when you're trying to debug stuff too.